Hey there, it's Christian from Seven Gamer Network, and I'm here with another Spirit of Rebellion, uh, Star Wars Destiny character tactica and card analysis. Uh, we're going to look at, um, well, a rogue today, um, but a heroic rogue, uh, and it's the completely marvellous, I think, uh, Jin Erso, and here she is in all her glory. So, let's have a look at uh, um, these die sides to start with then. So what we see uh, straight up is, is all black, um, so that's really solid. Uh, and we've got um, two ranged, we've got a one discard uh, uh, and a two discard, and then we've got the resource side plus a blank. Now, uh, that's a very strong die, but of course everything's going to be evaluated in terms of the points. And she is 15 and 20. Uh, 20 is a lot of points for an elite character, um, especially in Hero. Uh, where you just don't have so many slightly cheaper characters to be able to make up points with. Uh, and also 15 is a slightly awkward um, price point, uh, because again, of that issue of trying to pair characters. So she better have a pretty powerful ability. Well, it's pretty good, I've got to say. The cost of the first yellow event you play each round is decreased by one, which opens up a whole slew of possible plays out of your hand that would not normally be possible. And so your opponent... Uh, well, they need to know their one-cost events in the game, uh, yellow events in the game, and they've always got to be bearing that in mind as they're playing against you. Which so it is, it is a good, it is a very good um, ability that. And with her eleven health, uh, it's not massive, but it's it's okay, it's okay for that sort of price point. You might argue we'd we'd want another point, but it's okay. Um, so let's talk about these dice then, because I think she's a classic example. She's one of the early ones that they spoiled when they were talking about in this set. That they wanted to make characters that were a bit more specialised than perhaps we'd seen in Awakenings. Uh, and, and I think that's, that's what we get here. We get a character with those uh, two very solid uh, two damage sides. Um, and then these lovely discard sides. Now, of course, really that leads us to think, well, we're either building some sort of damage uh, build with her and that's how we're going to use her and at 1520 she's going to be the main character that we're using um, uh, or we're looking at a sort of milling discardy controlly type build uh, and, and and I think that's really what we, where we have to start looking at the other cards that are available to us and the kind of character pairings that we can make with her to make an assessment on that because really we're looking at are we building an aggro build or we're building a milli discardy controlly type build now i do think that you can build an aggro type um, build with her and i have built aggro type builds with her and they've been fine but i think if you're looking at this in terms of a competitive um, a competitive build I think at the moment, in as the um, cards currently stand, we don't really. She just she isn't built to be all out aggro. Um, those are two solid damage sides, but uh, for instance, for one point more, we're getting a Vader. I mean, at this point, we've been spoiled with Mace Windu, um, and I think he's twenty-two points, admittedly. But my goodness, does he have more damage? I can't imagine, and of course there isn't any other characters that for those extra two points that we really want to add to Jin to make the most of now her being a damage type character. Now, I will talk about Rebel Commando in a bit and how I think if you are going to build an aggro build, that's probably the way that you go with, uh, go with her, so we get all the guns in, and that can be okay, like that can be fine. But in my experience, uh, you know, when you're trying to build decks and you're trying to build something that's going to be the most competitive that you can uh, and win as many games as you can, that's why we're building decks and trying to do this thing, um, the current card pool really more supports her being um, basically impossible to kill. And so therefore, a mill style of play, uh, I think, is the best build with Jin at the moment. So let's have a look at what that might uh, include. So... What it really hinges around is the combo of second chance and ammo belt. Uh, now I've made a whole, I've made two videos on second chance ammo belt decks. I had to play with them and had to play against them. 
Um, and so I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but suffice it to say that second chance isn't discarded if you've got armor belt. You can discard the armor belt so you can reuse the second chance, which essentially right there and then, if you've got an armor belt and second chance, gives Jin an extra 10 health. Uh, and of course, the other thing is that you're going to have two of each of those, and you're probably going to have recursion because if we look at uh, what recursion they've now printed, we've got um, we've got cheat. Switch a card in your hand with a card in your discard pile so you can replay the ammo belt out or even the second chance. And we've got Rebel. Um, now that's got to play only if you have one more dice shown in a discard. Well again that's fairly easy with Jin, that's a 1 in 3 on, on each of her dice. Um, and play a card from your discard pile decreasing its cost by 1. Uh, well decreasing uh, ammo but a second chance to only 2 cost means you can cast it even if you've sorry you can play it if you've ever even even if it's just to start the turn you've only got those two resources but of course you can play it you can overwrite things as well so this little suite of cards sorry loan operators in the middle of it I should have put that to one side slightly but this little suite of cards with second chance I'm about rebel cheat allows you to it feels like keep gin alive almost infinitely and when you throw loan operative into the mix as well uh, it gets a little bit silly. So this lone operative, it's got two discard on, we really like that. It's got a bit of damage, it's got resource, that's great. We definitely use quite a lot of uh, resources in a uh, gin control -y type of build. But these two specials heal two damage from attached characters, take two damage off gin. Oh, it's devastating. And three if she's the last one, and quite often that will be the case. Uh, it's horrifyingly good when you're hitting those specials. Um, getting a field medic going off every turn, uh, essentially for free, uh, you know, it's that's really quite ridiculous. Um, so I, I feel like the reason that that style of play is better with Jin is not because her dice dictate that; it's because the the card pool that's around her works so well to keep her alive. I mean. You can have a gin. I mean, I have had many games where opponents have killed gin four, five times over, and they still lost because they just can't put her down. And you just get a last-minute rebel off or a last-minute cheat off, and they've got to go chew through another ten health because you've got the ammo belt back for the second chance. Really, really tough. So very, very strong. And and I think because you're going to be playing that. A couple of cards you might think about, including Con Artist, is very strong. Um, one of the difficulties with Con Artist is, well, one of the difficulties with Jin is that you can only have three upgrades on it. You feel like you want six, um, because you're going to have Ammo Belt Second Chance on it um, as soon as you need it. Uh, and I'd be a little more on the safe side with putting it on her perhaps a bit earlier than you think you might do. Because you never know when a No Mercy is going to wipe Jin out, and that's the end of the game, if that's the case. So, you've got Con Artist, and uh, you've got uh, Ammo Belt Second Chance on it. Well, you've only got one more spot. Um, so, things like Lone Operative, which is really great. You might say, well, that's overkill if you've got Second Chance. Well, no, it, it keeps that going for even longer then. It could be amazing. Con Artist um, is, however, very good early game. Um, because you know, sometimes just getting one or two activations of con artist off and making them ditch three cards will very often be the difference between finishing them off that round, you know, milling them out that round, or having to survive a whole extra round, uh, which is always tough for our mill decks to do. Scout's just a great, cheap, very excellent bit of removal, um, well, discard, but you can be very selective with it. We can get load, rid of loads of great cards like Sith Holocrons and Four Speeds or um, He Doesn't Like Yous and all that kind of really, really great cards. We can get rid of those. And of course, it will get rid of really expensive cards because if it's their last card in hand or they've only got two very expensive cards in hand, it works superbly well. Now, if you don't want to go a damagey, uh, a sort of milly build and you're looking to go more damagey, um, then, I mean, cards that you could include might be something like Ascension Gun, I think is pretty good. Um, it's arguable, it depends who you're pairing her with, but if you're pairing her with a red character, yes, that is going to bring in a lot of guns. 
as to whether it's better than the Ascension gun. Um, one of the things that I do quite like, uh, and I would generally consider including Ascension gun even in a control E mill build, is because you've got focus, so it allows you to get Jin to a focus to a discard sides, or you've got the two for one on it itself, that's quite nice. Um, and this used ability in a battlefield is not being used but was brought to the game as if you just claimed it um, allows you to do all sorts of shenanigans so uh, if you play against another mill deck and they bring command center um, and you think they're going to be faster than you well that's fine if you win the roll off you can pick your battlefield which is Otagunga most of the time you're going to use this mill um, and uh, if they've got command center well you can still use that ability which is pretty cool um, so uh, yeah little things like that can be very very powerful um, and thermal and of course it's still got decent damage sides on it with the one and the two um, so uh, if you're going to go the damage you build I think a thermal detonator is very strong with her it's got the discards um, which can really work uh, especially if you're going with something like Akbar um, and, and I feel like that those two specials they are of course they're just always brilliant. They're always going to be difficult to deal with. And um, one of the things that we do see that we can do with Jin is we can play Cheat and we can play Rebel. And we can recur these cards very, very easily. Um, uh, and can I... Uh, sorry, I'm just real. Hang on a second. It's going to work with Ammo Belt as well, isn't it? Uh, from the upgrade, we discarded by a card effect. Wow, there we go. Yeah, that's totally going to include that as well. So, um, it's very strong. A thermal detonator with, with gin, uh, e even if you do decide to go that sort of damagey build. Now, a couple of cards I'm just going to mention because I think they help you to make the most of gin. And that is C3PO, uh, who is one of the most powerful rares in the game. Um, all because of his action, you don't really care what his dice rolls the vast majority of the time. Um, and what, what makes C3PO so good with Jin is if you're doing the discardy mill thing, well, you turn her two damage, two damage, one and a two mill, uh, di two discard into two discard, two discard, one discard, two discard, and you just make her all about the discard with C3PO. Um, so very powerful. The drawback is, of course, that 3PO is slow. Um, it is going to slow your turn down if you're using 3PO, but he makes you so very consistent. Um, and, of course, it might also be that if you... Grums, you need to get uh, a second chance off. Well, then it can turn Jin's dice into two uh, resources, two resources. Uh, and then, of course, you should be able to play out that second chance. So he, he helps your deck become very, very solid. Um, and uh, and whoever you pair with, Jin, if they've got any two sides, he, turn that, he can turn those into discard sides as well, um, if Jin rolls hers. So you can really maximise the discard that you're getting. Fast hands, you, getting your dice removed is bad, always. And if you roll into the two, two discards with Jin and then they both get taken away, that's absolutely awful awful to deal with on that round fast hands is going to help you blast through that um, again you do run into that difficulty of the so many upgrades on gin but early days if you do see fast hands i'd be really considering using it so kind of characters that we can play with them well i've put four down here let's look at these two first because i feel like they're almost um there's kind of one who's very definitely on his own, which is the Rebel Commando, and then you've got uh, Padme as well. Um, so let's have a look at these two first, because they're similar-ish. So we've got lots of focus uh, here on both of these, but one, um, and we've got lots of resources. And one of the things that I found is playing with Jin is you want lots of resources, because even though you're not using resources, or you're losing, using one less resource when you play your event, a lot of the powerful stuff in in yellow um, and and trying to play out with these sort of bigger up you know your second chances your loan operatives uh, you know your ascension guns and all that kind of thing it becomes it becomes very expensive and especially if you end up getting hit by things like imperial inspection being able to generate resources is really powerful so I really like um, 
having Admiral Akbar um, uh, with her. Um, oh, I'm just realising Mon Mothma's actually 11. Let me flip that, guys. Because Mon Mothma, well, because you're not going to use Jin at her 15 points cost. Um, and I, I would not be using um, a one die um, Jin with a two die Mon Mothma. Um, that's really not going to make the most of either of those characters, really, um, because Mon Mothma wants something better to go with than a single die uh, of Jin. So um, I'm going to flip that one, and, and we'll concentrate on on Akbar, because uh, and you can actually see I've done quite a lot of uh, Jin Akbar play. Spent quite a, a lot of time building a deck for that, um, and one of the things that there is a really nice synergy with is his ability, um, and it does mean that. You know, there are times when, let's say, you know, that happens twice and they decide to stick it on their, I don't know, on their Maz. And then the next round you roll, you know, two dice, uh, you, you roll the two twos of damage on Jin, and suddenly you're thinking, I could kill Maz here. I don't think that would be a bad play. You know, if you're trying to stay alive, removing their characters, it's still going to help you to do that. Um, so I think that's strong. And of course, Akbar's got the discard on and the focus to make the most out of Jin's really very good dice. And those two resources make a huge difference. Um, so, I mean, Padme at 10. Now, I haven't seen this deck played very much. Um, the mono yellow. Um, so, two die Jin, one die Padme. But um, I, think this, I think there could be something in it. I think it could be quite strong. The two uh, focus is always very uh, handy when you're playing you know, a very specific strategy. She's got discard on uh, resource. We love that, and then of course she's got this great milling effect. Um, so you know, if you were to have uh, Padme, you know, with a con artist on, uh, you know, that can make an opponent's deck absolutely, uh, you know, just dribble away very, very quickly. Um, and I also think as well that you know, if uh, if you're playing with Padme, well then of course you've got second chance Amabel available to put on her. So that makes her staying power really strong. Now, if you decide to go a damagey build, I don't think um, Rebel Commando is a bad choice. He's ten points. Uh, he's got ten health. You're at twenty-one health. That's that's okay. Um, he's got two damage sides. He's also got discard. So you could end up with you know a super discard round, which can be really great if you're playing against a Vader Raider and you can put out a load of discard. That's going to stop a lot of their ability to re-roll and make them really have to rely upon their activation roll to hit their damage. So that's really good. Um, uh, he's got a resource and of course he's got a quite nice special. It's a bit expensive, um, but uh, it, it built-in removal is is really strong. So um, I I think those are your, your your main options that you've got to go with Jin because I don't really see many other. Um, I don't really see any viable builds using only a one die Jin. They all just feel weak. Uh, and finally, I'm going to mention Otagunga as the battlefield that I would most usually play with Jin, because I'm most usually going to go for a controlly, make the game go long type build. Uh, and for that, we just need to keep Jin alive. Uh, and so Otagunga, as with pretty much any mill deck currently, this seems to be the best battlefield uh, to use um, to use with her. So that's Jin um, and some ideas for playing with her and for using her and building uh, her into your decks. In terms of playing against her, um, I think what I'd do is I'd point you towards my video. I'll put a link into it, a link to it in the description of how to play against uh, second chance armor belt decks because. I think if you're playing against an aggro build of Jin, well, you treat her just like you do most normal aggro decks that don't have any action cheating. Or well, there'd be very little action cheating. Um, oh, one reason, one thing, you could include Maz with Jin, um, and you could play a, a, a Maz build, like a one die Maz build. Um, and, and I don't think that I have played, I have played it. My difficulty with it is, is that it always just felt slightly second best to something like using a, an Akbar build, and that was largely due to what you lost by not having yellow, um, uh, by not having red in the deck. Sorry, um, you know, being able to play cards like three PO, 
um, to really make the most of Jin's dice, uh, being able to play things like Scout um, and then be able to play things like Field Medic to you know extra help to keep her alive. Um, I don't know. It just it just didn't feel like it was quite as strong, uh, and so. Uh, by all means, I would experiment with it because it, it, a, a bit of action cheating it, it can work really quite well. Um, but again, I don't think it's probably going to be pushing that the sort of top tier of play. And and this will come down to actually an interesting thing. And this may be very temporal and very meta based, but uh, there were a couple of weeks when it seemed like everybody was shouting for second chance hammer belt to be to hit with a nerf bat. Um, and they were saying that it was just negative play experiences and everyone's going to play it and of course it's completely broken um, and and at the time I remember saying I think if we do that we're going to lose a whole we're going to lose a whole way of playing in this current meta and very interestingly it hasn't come out as being one of the leading ways of playing in the meta we don't see Jin Akbar or Jin Maz or Jin Rebel Commando winning basically any tournaments um, and we don't see that many people running it at all so uh, which is interesting because I do think it's a strong deck I think it's a very strong deck um, and I think if people aren't prepared for it and they suddenly come up against it it will throw them uh, and it does have a big psychological impact when you can't take a character down uh, and I think that you know, if you're playing competitively, if you can make any build that induces tilt in your opponent and that feeling of frustration and anger, um, then that's probably a strong deck to consider playing in competitive play because it means you're more likely to stay uh, in control in those sort of situations. Anyway, there's Jim. Uh, so I really love her. I think she's a great character and there's loads of cool cards to play with here. I've always been a big fan of recursion in games. Uh, it needs to be done right um, and it can be done very wrong. Um, and this one's on the edge. And I think um, perhaps the designer has learnt quite a bit from seeing this sort of thing play out. And we might not see much more of this type of build and play in future sets. So if you do like it, I'd say get your fill of it now because there's probably not going to be very much of this kind of play uh, and things like Second Chance Hammer Belt with recursion in future sets, uh, which you may absolutely rejoice about or you may be a little bit sad about. Um, but either way, it probably isn't going to be around for very long. Anyway, there's Jin and some strong ways of playing uh, with her. So uh, as ever, if you haven't already, check out swdestiny.com. Um, they're hosting uh, these videos uh, and Mike who runs it, great guy and they do so much great content on there and of course there's loads of other great content creators on there besides besides myself um, but if you did want to get involved a little bit more um, and maybe get involved in some cool discussion especially around this type of stuff and more competitive destiny uh, then I also have a Patreon um, which also helps me to get more of these videos done uh, when there's a little bit of money coming in for it too. So I hope you've enjoyed the content um, and if you want to join the, um, the Discord community that we've got going on with the Patreon, you'd be super welcome. Uh, there's all sorts of exciting chat going on with it all the time. Anyway, uh, that's enough from me on Jin. Uh, so until next time, keep enjoying Destiny.